If I say moop and mop, what comes to mind? Sounds a little bit like a cartoon character duo, doesn't it? Welcome to the tales of moop and mop. <laughs> but they are actually crucial design concerns for medical grade power supplies. Moop is means of operator protection and mop is means of patient protection. Along with Moop and Mop for medical grade power supplies, we also need to keep high isolation, leakage current, EMC requirements, and safety certifications in mind. Yeah, it's a lot more complicated than a Saturday morning cartoon show. But don't you worry, we're here to help. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Louis Boucher from Recom and I explore the various design requirements for medical grade power supplies. We also explore the role that isolation and leakage current play in this arena and the solutions that Recom offers in terms of medical grade power supplies. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Recom. Hi, Lewis. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking all about medical grade power solutions today. But Lewis, before we get started, tell my audience a bit about Recom. Yeah, so my name is Lewis Boucher. I'm my applications engineer with Recom Power. And for those of you that do not know, Recom is a manufacturer of switch mode power supplies. We make both AC to DC and DC to DC converters with over 30,000 active products in our portfolio. Recom was founded back in 1974 in Germany, but is currently headquartered in Gamun in Austria, which is that picture building there. We have offices all around the globe with our North American office located in Denver, Colorado, which is where we do our North American tech support and sales support. Warehouses both in Austria and Singapore, what I want you to remember is that Recom does power and we do power well. Very reliable designs and we have a proven track record of excellent power solutions. Here at Recom, we power your products. Excellent. Okay, so let's talk about medical grade power supplies. So what's needed for these solutions? Yeah, so there's quite a few different topics that you're going to have to have figured out for your medical safety requirements. So it's an overview. You're going to need high isolation in your power supply. And to have both two mop and two mop protections, get into that a little bit, have low leakage currents, meet EMC requirements, as well as more strict medical EMC, and then also safety certifications. So the blanket one that most people know of is 6601-1. So that's going to be with whatever safety agency you want to go through, whether that be IEC, EN, or ANC, AMI, CSA. There's all different ones you can go through for whatever region you're looking at selling in. They're all going to have this 6601-1. And while you do need that, that's not the whole story. You're going to have to look for a couple of these other previous topics that I brought up. Okay, so let's talk about isolation. What are the isolation needs here? So for medical grade isolation, it's just going to be a tougher requirement than your standard industrial power supply. So isolation provides a physical break in your circuit and increases safety and provides a reduction in noise. Both of these are critical in medical applications. For medical grade isolation, you're going to need to withstand voltage of at least 4 kilovolts DC per one minute and up. Also, reinforced insulation. So reinforced insulation is going to be the strongest type of insulation you can get. Functional is the least. It's just so that the device can function. Basic has a couple more uh, uh, safeguards in there, but reinforced really has two different methods. It has both the separated windings with the lacquer as well as an insulation in between that separation boundary, which is that thin sheet you see in that picture there, that orange sheet. That's another method of insulation that is offered in reinforced insulation packages. You're also going to have to look for creepage and clearance measurements. So creepage is just the insulating surface between the two conductive components. So sometimes you'll see people drill in a slot into their PCB to kind of increase this distance. And then clearance is just the closest distance between the two uh, conducting bodies. So like kind of for arc over or ionization of the air in between them, which is the most common medium. For both of these in two MOP, you're going to need to have eight millimeters of both creepage and clearance distances internal to the converter. 
So we need to look at patient protection and operator protection here as well, right? So what are the differences between these two in terms of isolation? Yeah, so for patient protection, that's going to be more strict than operator protection. An MOPP, means of patient protection, is going to require higher creepage and clearance distances than for operator protection. This is because the patient is usually in a much more sensitive condition than the operator would be in. They have some intrusive surgical procedures going on, which could be more of a dire consequence if there is an electric shock. So they're very susceptible to any kind of shock. Whereas operator, they may be interfacing more externally with the equipment versus the patient. So this is why patient protection is more of a strict requirement, as you can see, for 1,500 volts of isolation the clearance distance and creepage distance are both higher than the operator protection. And then for two MOPP, that means two means of this protection. So kind of a redundancy there. So that's really what you're going to want to look for on the power supply data sheet is that it has two MOP and then it has 250 VAC. The 250 VAC is the working voltage. That means it's going to have the withstand within the power supply of 250 volts AC continuously. So we also need to talk about leakage current too, right? Can you explain that aspect of these power solutions? So leakage current is going to be unintentional current. It flows across the isolation barrier and goes from primary to secondary side. So there's going to be three different classifications. It's going to be body, no direct patient contact, body float, which has a physical contact with patient, and then cardiac float or CF, which is the direct contact to human heart and is the most strict requirement for leakage current. You don't want leakage current. It's something that you try to avoid in your design, but it's just kind of a fact of nature. With the transformer windings, there's going to be some capacitive coupling, and there's going to be some current that flows across from primary to secondary side. And as you can see with type CF, patient leakage current, the strictest in this table here, 10 microamps for a normal condition and 50 microamps for single fault, so our, our power supplies are typically in this cardiac float rating are going to have around two microamps. So we're going to have a lot to play with there. So Lewis, are there any other design concerns we should keep in mind? Yeah, so EMC is going to be a consideration. For instance, if you're making an EMC filter, you're going to want to be wary of any Y cap spanning the isolation barrier because this can provide another path for leakage current to flow across. A way around this to use common mode chokes instead for reducing switching noise. So you're still going to want to do your Class B EN55032. Um, we have an example filter here for that standard for a REM10 series. You're also going to want to have medical equipment immunity standard EN6601-1-2. This is going to be uh, so it's less susceptible to things like disturbances on the input that could make it fail and less reliable. So you're going to want to look for that in your data sheet. Also, another consideration is an increase in at-home health care since COVID. So hospitals have cleaner mains power than our typical home would have. So you're going to have to have better susceptibility to things like surges and outages, whereas at a hospital, they'll have backup power that can take over in the event of an outage. And also maybe your equipment will have backup battery power too. Another consideration is that less skilled operators are at home versus like a nurse or a doctor in a hospital. And oftentimes there's is also the patient, which kind of blurs the patient and operator specs a bit. That makes sense. Now, what kind of solutions does Recom have for medical grade power designs? So for medical grade, we have both AC to DC and DC to DC technology, power conversion. It's going to have medical certification, 6601-1, like I was saying, as well as reinforced isolation and the two MOP safety certifications. For DC to DC, you're going to want to look for the REM series. These are going to be board mount solutions. And then for AC to DC, you're going to want to look for Rack M series. Just look for the Ms. That'll mean medical power supply. The Rack M can be board mount or it can be off board. We have open frame and also enclosed versions, as well as encapsulated and potted versions, depending on the power level. Also, wired output versions available. You should know that we have all of our safety certificates and reports that are ready to be shared with certifying agent to help streamline the process and make things less complicated. Cool. Now, can we talk a bit more about those DC to DC solutions a bit more? Yes. So the REM series will vary from 1 watt to 6 watts. And these are all going to be regulated DC to DC converters. 
and come in industry standard packages and pinouts. We have through hole topologies as well as surface mount, and they're going to come in standard voltage combinations for the input to output voltages. So again, high isolation is a requirement for medical applications. So we're going to have reinforced 2-MOP isolation as well as 4 kilovolt DC as a minimum. We go all the way up to 10 kilovolts DC isolation for our medical grade. You can also find additional pin functions such as remote on and off, as well as trim, and then remote sense for select parts. Also, Class B and C is achievable with a few additional components. So, Lewis, what kind of specific applications would these solutions be a good fit for? All sorts of things in the medical field. So medical pulse therapy, which requires a high isolation due to the high output voltage. Ultrasonic diagnostic machinery. This requires high isolation and low noise and also great EMI performance. Electrosurgical cutting equipment. This is going to require small size power supply as well as high isolation. And then also our REM series can offer dual outputs, which is uh, helpful here for generating a plus minus voltage combination. And then medical camera, once again, high isolation supply, and then it's going to need two mop. But who said that medical supplies have to be so expensive? We do have an economy series, the REM 3.5E, which is a 3.5 watt in a through hole or surface mount topology package, two to one input voltage rating, and also can go up to 10 kilovolts per one minute reinforced isolation. Still has the same IC EN6601 standard as well as two MOP, but it really gives you the most bang for your buck in medical fields. Moving on to the REM 20, we have a 20 watt medical series, four to one input voltage range. This one has an AC rated reinforced isolation of five kilovolts, which an AC is a stricter voltage to rate isolation with. Through hole standard pinouts, two microamp patient leakage current. Like I was saying earlier, that's a very good spec to meet for that cardiac float requirement, as well as single and dual output versions, and an excellent thermal durating going all the way up to 85C for the full 20 watt load. So, what if my audience needs a solution in the 60 watt range? So we have a quarter brick through hole topology, 60 watts. It's our largest DC to DC power supply for medical field. It has a four to one input voltage range with nominals of 24 and 48 volts. Regulated outputs from five to 24 volts with also some plus and minus outputs there. Five kilovolts AC for one minute reinforced isolation. And then also the same standard 6601 as well as general industry 62368 safety certifications. And also some of the additional pin functions like control and trim and remote sense. So what about AC-DC conversion? So the Rack M series of AC-DC power supplies can be either encapsulated modules for onboard power conversion, or they can be offboard. So the encapsulated modules are going to range from 6 watts to 40 watts with 5 volt outputs all the way up to 48 volt outputs. A 60 watts and up for offboard chassis mounting. These are all fanless supplies, and you can get enclosures made available for these. The slash 277 suffix for ultra-wide input is also an option, which can go all the way up to 305 volts AC on the input. All the others use the universal input voltage range, and as well as class B EMC with no additional components for the AC to DC supplies. So do you guys have an economical solution here as well? Yeah, so once again, we have an E-series. The Rack MO6E-K-277 is one of those parts. The 6 watts actually are smallest AC to DC power supply for medical grade power. This can take in that high 277 suffix up to 305 VAC input, and it has 3.3 volts, 5 volt, 15 volt, and 24 volt output versions. This is also rated for over voltage category 3, which means you can get a little closer to the grid which is great for maybe an at-home application, as well as one inch by one inch board mount. So that really saves a lot of space. You're not going to find much other solutions for six watt medical AC to DC that are even smaller than a one inch by one inch, even if you decide to try and make one yourself and be a, a larger solution. And then the Rack M30 is another power supply that comes in several different package styles with this ultra wide 277 input. You can have a 30 watt for continuous up to 60 C comes in either a panel mount package, which also comes with a rail clip, so you can just mount it to a DIN rail in your application and then just connect some wired leads to it through those push terminals. Or the, it also has wired lead outputs for easy integration and no PCB necessary. Or you can still use it as a PCB mount part. Once again, it has over voltage category three and class B performance without any additional components. And then also I should mention it has a peak power mode, so it can get up to actually 36 watts peak power as long as there's a recovery period afterwards. 
So I know that fanless AC to DC power supplies can bring a lot of benefits for medical design. So does Recom offer anything in a fanless design? Oh, absolutely. All the higher power Recom solutions are going to be fanless and medical grade for the AC to DC power supplies that we offer. Starting the top left, we have a Rackham 230, comes in a two inch by four inch package. And then we have the Rackham 550, which comes in a three inch by five inch package. Then we have the Rackham 600, 600 watt supply, and then the Rackham 1200 in the bottom left. We really like the Rackham 1200. We liked it so much that we made a bigger version called the Rackham 2400, which can do 1600 watt fanless. Going into the Rackham 1200 though, which we have out and available now, it's going to be able to do 800 to 1,000 watts without any fan. You can use it, a fan on it and then get 1,200 watts or have it in boost power mode and also get 1,200 watts for a short duration. So this will be a 3.8 by 9 inch package, 1.57 inch height. And this is much smaller than all of our competition in this 1,000 watt field and has no fan and doesn't even need a fan. A lot of our competitors require a fan and are still even larger than what we're offering here comes with the medical and industrial certifications as platform modifications such as you can change the output connectors you can change or apply a conformal coating also pm bus for programming some of the internal specifications and like hold up times things like that as well as uh, integrating it into your power system to make it a little more of a smart system and work together better it's again high efficiency 95% which is very attractive for energy savings as well as limiting heat generation. So, Lewis, what kind of applications would these power supplies be used in? So, AC to DC can be used in all sorts of different hardwired applications. So, like medical automated machinery for like analytics, such as in the bottom left. You got medical surgery robotics, like these robotic arms, which is kind of interesting because that's kind of a hybrid between robotics and also medical requirements for power supplies. The Rackham 1200 does a very good job of merging these two together. And I've seen this used many times in things like robotics and medical equipment. So medical beds are a very common occurrence for AC to DC power supplies that still need to be medical grade because they're going to have to be able to adjust for the patient and take measurements and for patients in critical conditions. So MRI machines and x-ray machines are very common to see requiring medical grade power supplies. So I hope you found this interesting. If you still want more to learn about medical grade power supplies, we have a lot of resources on the Recom website. We have surgical system case studies, the books of knowledge written by Recom, which also include a lot of great information on medical grade power supplies. The isolated DC to DC white paper, which can offer a lot of insights into how DC to DCs work uh, that are isolated, as well as our product selection guide, which will offer all of our products for medical grade power supplies. Excellent. Well, Lewis, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Recom. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.